Happy New Year. Well, this is a great way to start the new year off by being in the house of the Lord with family and friends. And it's that time of year when we all make promises, right? Well, maybe not all of us, but we, some people make promises you know they'll never keep. It's called a New Year's resolution, right? It's expected to be broken. It's the thing that goes in one year and out the other. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, um, New Year, it's a, it's a great time to start new things, it seems like. And I, and I don't, I think it's because of calendar, you know, but we start new things. I know Kelly gets to start a new sermon folder. I, I give her, after every Sunday, she gets my sermon notes and she puts them. I have 23 sermon folders, three ring binders filled with sermons, and, and I've been keeping them all since I started. So she gets to start a new one of those, and we start new things like um, figuring out new computers back there. We were having trouble with them. It turns out that it was just a plug-in, you know? And Joe May, Joe May, give Joe May the credit for that one. Yeah, that's all you're getting all year, though. Oh, Jeff, give Jeff the credit, okay. Now, great. Now, they're gonna be traveling, and they're gonna, they're gonna be fighting all the way about it. who gets the credit for that. So, I'm giving Jeff Van Heist the credit for that, so. <laughs> I'm just saying, saving a marriage, that's all I do, I'm saving a marriage, so, yeah. yeah, so, question, how many of you use Google as a search engine for internet? Yeah, Google's pretty popular, Google's, a lot of people like to use Google, you know, you've heard the term Google it, that's, that's actually becoming a phrase, that's something we use, you know, and, and every year, I don't know if you know this, every year Google does a review of the searches for the year. And they categorize those reviews. I mean, can you imagine worldwide, they're keeping track of this stuff. Now, we keep track of stuff here, too, but not like, like Google does. You know, I will tell you this. God keeps way better track than Google does of everything that we do anyway. So anyway, but Google, and so here at the end of each year, they, are, they have their most popular trends or by topics, for, by search topics. So, for example, here are some of the top searches for various topics in 2021. Uh, general searches, Australia versus India, Cricket World Cup. We Americans haven't got a clue, but that was the top general search for Google worldwide. Americans, you are out of date, okay? Uh, in news, top, top search in news was Afghanistan. That makes sense. Actors. I don't know why you want to search actors, but actors, Alec Baldwin. There's a guy who, he didn't have such a good 2021. Um, games, PopCat. Anybody know what PopCat is? Okay. <laughs> Athletes, Christian Erickson. We are out in the blue on this stuff, aren't we? <laughs> Just searching for people. Alec Baldwin again, he got hit too twice here. Movies, Eternals, anybody know that? Eternals? Okay, how about this? TV shows, Squid Games. You heard of, uh -huh, yeah, I heard, heard of that, yeah, yeah. So, my point is that Google keeps track of all. These are the top searches, and look how out of, out of touch we are. We, I mean, we, it's like, those aren't my searches, they're evidently not your searches, but it's worldwide, they're keeping track of all these searches, and they, they're doing a great job, really, really, to do that, they're keeping track of all this information, trends, and then they review them, and that's what we do. End of the year, we review. I, I don't know about you, but I, I like to uh, review 2021 and things like that, and maybe you do too, as I look forward, but today, my title is Impact, and I was thinking about impact, and to get to my message here, I was thinking about different types of impact. I thought different types of title, because I thought impact is just short, you know, and I thought of sudden impact, but I thought, nah, that's not gonna get me what I want for 2022, you know, or brace for impact, and I'm not sure that's the message I wanna send either, so I just call it impact. So impact is, what is impact? Impact is, the action of one object coming forcibly into contact with another, collision, crash, meet head on, or have a strong effect on someone or something. That's 
that's where I'm going here, okay? Having a strong effect on someone or something. So when I take look, when I look back, when I take stock on my life, on, on our life as a CFC family, because I do that for us as well, you know, I do a Google-type review for the church, how we've done in our lives over the past year. I, the questions are, are, have I, you, CFC, have we made a positive impact on those people around us this year? Have we, have we had a strong effect on someone this year? Of course, you know, we, we, questions come, how do I do? Should I make a change? Did we, did we do okay in this area? Was there something falling short in this area? And, and we eventually ask questions, what comes next? If I have to make a change, what do I have to do next? If, if I did good, what comes next? What will happen in 2022? And of course, none of us know. But it's amazing how when you make an impact in one area, how it affects other areas. It's kind of like the ball, right? Bing, 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 you know? And it's so important in making impact. So let me ask you this question. Today, sitting here, January 2nd, 2022, are you, how are you feeling? Are you, as you look at the year, as you, as you gaze down yonder in the year, are you feeling hopeful? Or do you feel fearful? Not knowing what it can be. You know, 2020, 2021, left a lot of people feeling fearful, didn't they? The Bible says that perfect love does what? Casts out fear. If we reverse those words, perfect fear casts out love. There's a lot of people living in fear and not being very lovely, not being very loving. I, want to, I submit to you that if we work on the love attitude, it helps take care of the fear attitude as well. Are you willing, let me ask you this, are you willing to do, when you look at your life and you think about life, and we, I think about this in terms of us as a CFC family too, if, if, are you willing to do whatever it takes to make necessary changes in life to make a kingdom and personal impact on others? As you think about, well, you know, I've spent time with this person, but I really haven't made much of an impact. Or I did this, and I don't know how, you know, I, I thought about me a lot, maybe. Maybe it's, I don't know what it would be for you, but have you made the impact you wanted to? And are you willing to make the changes necessary to do more? Or are you going to call it good enough? Many people will take a moment, they'll stop, and they'll, they'll take inventory about what's truly, truly important in life. To look at what, what's worked, what hasn't worked, and to consider where they've been and, and what they're, if I stay in this course, what's my current trajectory going to take me? What's my trajectory right now if I stay this course? And, I, and for young people especially, if you keep doing what you're doing, where will you end up? You know, NASA makes mid-course corrections when they put a rocket ship to the moon. They have to. If they're off by one degree, they're millions of miles off. So sometimes in life, and maybe the first of the year is a good time to start to make mid-course corrections. This trajectory is going to take me to place, and I see it may not be a good place. Or this trajectory, yeah, I'm right on. I'm on target. If I keep this up, I'm going to get where I need to go, where God wants me to go, where I should go. Philosopher... Um, George Santayana said this, those who fail to learn the lessons of history are doomed to repeat it. I got an amen from Katie. That's good. That's, that's true. Or this one, some of the best lessons we ever learned are learned from past mistakes. The error of the past is the wisdom and success of the future. Dale E. Turner, actor. True. Very true. But then there's some people who think like this. You tried your best and failed miserably. The lesson is never try. But that's Homer Simpson, so I'm not sure how much you want to take from, from Homer Simpson. You know? I personally look back and I try to learn, but as your pastor, I also look back for CFC and try to learn from our past, past and what we've done and, and how to go. And so with that, 
I have a, a video clip here I'm going to show you, and uh, I want to, let's all stop for a moment. Let's maybe turn the lights down a little bit so you can see this better or whatever, and take a look at 2021 through the lens of you, of Christian Fellowship Churches. What's happened? Check this out.
memory lane? Is that, oh, let's just go back here. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of things that we've done. CFC's been involved in a lot of things. You've been involved in a lot of things. And I say kudos, way to go. And I think we did a lot of good things. I think, I think CFC has made an impact in our community in many ways. Yeah, the Lord's called some of our people home. We saw that in the video. And we wonder, how do you make an impact? You know, well, when we go to do a service for a memorial service or a funeral service for someone, we present the gospel plan. And through the life of that person that was lived and we share and all the sharing, I think I know people have heard the gospel message and, and prayerfully that's made an impact in their lives. So even in the, not just in life, but in the death of loved ones, we can make an impact. And, and our messages, you saw on the, we have the list of all the different messages and series we've done this year. I, I don't know how well this made an impact on people's lives in 2021 through the internet. We can't measure that, but we hopefully and prayerfully know it's made an impact on people. I, have, I get messages every now and then saying, you know, I watch your, the Devos, or the, you know, or watch the Wednesday night, or I watch this, and I really appreciate that, you know. It's not like they're flooding in, but they're coming, they're, they're happening. And those who joined our family, church family, through membership, they've made, we've made an impact there because people made the decision through membership or through baptism. By the way, speaking of baptism, I'd love to have more baptisms. Wouldn't it be cool to have a bunch of baptisms this year? But that takes us going out and sharing the gospel message of Jesus Christ to people. And maybe somebody's sitting here or watching and saying, you know, I was baptized years ago and I don't really remember anything. It didn't have much meaning for it. Well, we believe in rebaptism, So that's okay. We could do that too. Or somebody says, you know, I made a commitment for the Lord but never been baptized. Maybe you want to do that. Maybe you want to consider in 2022 to be the year for you to receive water baptism and proclaim to the world that, yes, I am a follower of Jesus Christ and I'm not ashamed to tell you of it. You know, we minister the kids on Sunday mornings with or our impact youth group that's meeting today even. And um, continually, the youth group, they're continually being impacted with God's word and God's lessons along the way. We've got people go on the mission field. We had uh, Mike and Gertie just recently and Carol this past year, the youth group, um, different people doing things out there, Love Inc. Um, all are making impacts where they are, not just here, but in other places, in other people's lives. And I believe, too, that if you've been on that field, like with Carol or Mike and Gertie recently, or the kids, those people are impacted maybe as much as the people you're impacting, I would think. I know it does me. It impacts me when I go out there. Or your generosity. Oh, my. We have a culture of generosity here. What a blessing it is to be able to share and help rescue people. $17,000 to rescue people from Afghanistan. I don't, I don't remember the number of people that we rescued, but hundreds of people rescued because of you, because of your love, your care, and your generosity. That's pretty cool. Prayer Park. Living Waters Prayer Chapel. We know that's making impact. People left notes, have done things. Yeah, you even made the six o'clock news with Prayer Park. That was pretty cool. You know, that makes an impact on people, not just here, but wherever that news media reaches, as well as stepping out in faith and forging ahead with a new worship facility. How's that gonna turn out? How's that gonna look? You know, I can tell you how it looks physically. Will we fill it? Will we do what with it? God knows that. We're just taking a step in faith, right? We're moving ahead with what we believe God is calling us to. And I'm not forgetting there's many, many, many other ministry areas that people that you guys have been in part of, a part of. You know, our vision is to be the most impacting church that we can possibly be in Mackinac County. And I, I praise the Lord because I believe you have been impacting. I say kudos, way to go, good job. Well done. But then I got to follow up and say, is it enough? Do we stop here? Do we just pat ourselves on the back, say, well done, and relax? I got an answer for you. Nope. <laughs> no, we don't. 
Learning lessons from our past, looking in the rearview mirror and moving forward is a good thing to do. But you don't drive the car looking through the rearview mirror unless you're backing up. And we're not backing up, we're moving forward. You've got to look out the window and keep moving that direction. Learning lessons from the past in order to be more impactful is a common thing in the Bible. So let's take a look real quick. First, understand that God wants us to, to learn from the past, but not to live in it. He doesn't want you to live in the past. It's real easy to have a good thing back there and miss a great thing right here. You know what I mean? Let's live in the present and look forward to the future. When things back there consume us, we generally don't have much interest in the future. For example, when the children of Israel were, were stuck and they couldn't move forward, God used the prophet Isaiah and he said, he said this, tell them this, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. God wants us to learn the lessons of the past, but move forward. Forget that stuff. Get it, get it behind you. Forget it. I got something new I'm doing. Do you see it? Do you understand it? Do you get it? Are you noticing? Are your eyes open? Paul told stories of God's people to try to convey to them that that of what happened in the Old Testament so we can learn from those things, learn from the past. He wrote this in 1 Corinthians. He said, these things happened to them as what? As examples for you and me. They were written down to warn us who live at the end of the age. If you think you're standing strong, be careful not to fall. The temptations in your life, they're not any different from what other people experience. You don't get something that's only you, okay? Other people have experienced your temptation, your issues. And God is faithful. That's a good one. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. He will give you a way out. He will, when you're tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. You know, when we're at the, this part of the year, we're always looking forward. And standing on the brink of something new can be scary. Because we don't understand it. There's uncertainty and there's fear, but God wants you and me to move forward without fear. Worrying about the future is not going to help us accomplish anything. In fact, Jesus has something to say about this in Matthew chapter 6. He said this, For this reason I say to you, don't be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, for no, for nor, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, that they do not sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? And who of you, by being worried, can add a single hour to his life? Did you get that? You who worry warts, you can't even add more time to your life. And why are you worried about clothing? Saks Fifth Avenue. Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you, not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you? <laughs> you of little faith, zing. Do not worry then, saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear for clothing for the Gentiles, the heathens, the, the, the people who are not followers of Jesus, eagerly seek all these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. When you do that, all these things will be added to you. So do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Amen to that. So we move forward in all the ways that God is calling you and me in CFC. I like that. You and me in CFC. <laughs> to move, even when we can't see the ending. That's faith. Hebrews tells us faith is the assurance of things hoped for. 
the conviction of things not seen. That's faith that we have to step out in. The key to confidence, the key to faith, is being in God's will, not in having the answers. Being in God's will, not in having all the answers. James cautions us. He says, he says, come now, you who say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there and engage in business and make a profit. We've got, we got these big plans, yet you do not know what your life will be like tomorrow. You're just a vapor that appears for a little while and then vanishes away. And on the blimp of it, the radar screen of eternity, we are just a blimp, blip. And instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and also do this or that. But as it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Therefore, to one who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. There's a story I heard, I read this week about years ago, a, a thunderstorm swept through a southern Kentucky, Kentucky farm where a family lived for six generations. They had an orchard there. And the wind blew over, an old, blew over this old pear tree that had been there for as long as anybody could remember. The grandfather was grieved to lose the tree on, that he used to climb as a young boy and, and eat the fruit from that tree in all his life. A neighbor came by and said to the grandfather, Doc, I'm really sorry to see your pear tree blown down. I'm sorry too, said the grandfather. It was a real part of my past. What are you going to do, the neighbor asked. Grandfather paused for a moment and said, I'm going to pick the fruit and burn what's left. That's a pretty wise way to deal with the past, isn't it? Pick the fruit and burn what's left. We need to learn their lessons from the past, enjoy them, and go on with today and the future. Don't let your past rob you of your future. Do you believe God is wanting you, me, and CFC to make an, go and make an impact for him in West Mackinac County and in the world? Yeah. I do. I believe he does. I believe he's called you and me and CFC just to do, just to be willing to do it. We just got to be willing and say, I'm available, God. I want to do it. How are we going to do it? Well, by being like he told, told Joshua, be strong and courageous. By obeying God's word, by following his lead, by, by setting ourselves apart to serve God. That means we don't step away from culture, but we step into culture and say we're different. We're different for a reason. So people can look at us and say, I want some of that. If we do this, I believe that we can and will be used for God mightily in 2022 and beyond. We're just getting started. I believe God is more concerned about your and my and our future than he is our past. When, we've, when we ask for forgiveness, what happens? Everything's thrown into the sea. So let's look back. Let's celebrate the past. But let's be prepared to move into the future and make an impact. Make an impact for God. My question I'm going to leave you with is, and you can walk out of here thinking about this, will you make that commitment to say, I am going to make an impact for the kingdom of God in some way, shape, or form in 2022? Will you commit to do that? I hope so. I hope so. And if there's anybody watching that has never made a commitment for the kingdom to allow Jesus to be Savior and Lord of your life, to surrender your life, I want to encourage you to surrender your life, just say, yes, Jesus, come into my life, come into my heart. You run it, you rule it, you reign. That's the greatest commitment you'll ever make in your life. Amen to that.